only pay for what you need. How much money can Liberty Mutual save you? One, two, three, three four, five. $2,808. Yep, everything hurts. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Simone Biles didn't let her Olympic journey end without competing one more time. She took home the bronze medal in the individual balance beam competition and her. Happening now. What pregnant women should know about the impact of the COVID-19 Delta variant and what a doctor wants unvaccinated pregnant women to do next. It's day four of the punishment phase for the Otis McCain trial. We'll take you inside the courtroom with more testimony that was heard this afternoon. That's coming up. A few pop-up showers to look at this afternoon, more rain chances, and how hot it's going to get this weekend. I'll see you in a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, one year after a convenience store clerk was shot and killed in Garden Ridge, her killer still has not been found. The Garden Ridge Police Department still needs some help solving the murder of 40-year-old Pollyanna Smotherman. Today, they released this surveillance video from the night of her murder. It happened at the Easy Mart in the 19,500 block of FM 3009. They're looking for the man you're about to hear in this next clip, and we do have a warning. Some viewers may find that clip disturbing. Don't answer the phone. Don't worry about the phone. Hurry up and get the lottery ticket. I want the whole world. All of it. All of it. All of it. If you recognize this man or have any information about Smotherman's murder, call the Comal County Crime Stoppers at 830-640-TIPS. Another day, another rise in COVID numbers. A look at the COVID-19 cases in Bear County. The seven-day average now at 1,146. There are 920 COVID patients in the hospital, 260 in the intensive care unit, and 132 people are on ventilators. It's a disturbing trend in the surge brought on by the Delta variant. There's been a significant increase in pregnant women as well with COVID-19 reported by at least two of the city's major hospital systems. Jesse Degriato now with why expectant mothers are being urged to get vaccinated as soon as possible. It started last month. University Hospital reported treating up to three pregnant women at a time with COVID-19, especially in the past week, as the Delta variant takes hold in Bear County. Whereas back in May and June, we maybe had one a month. Uh, so we've seen a huge rise in the number of uh, pregnant cases we're seeing. Most of them, says Dr. Ramsey, were unvaccinated. Same with Baptist Health System. The expectant moms treated there have needed supplemental oxygen, intubation in ICU. Some even had to deliver their babies prematurely, unlike University Hospital. Not yet, but we have uh, some pregnant women that are, are very sick right now, and we're watching them very Closely. Along with monitoring their baby's heart rate, he says it's a vital sign that shows that the mom's condition is deteriorating since pregnancy increases the risk of respiratory failure. And it is the, the large belly pushing up the lungs, making your lung volume smaller. Uh, there's a little bit of an immunosuppressive state in pregnancy. Chances of their babies being born with COVID, he says, are low. Yet if the mother was vaccinated. Uh, those antibodies that mommy mom makes from the vaccine cross the placenta and give the baby some protection for the first few months after birth. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. With kids heading back into the classroom soon, the thought of in-person learning amid a summer surge in cases might be a bit worrisome for parents and teachers. So right now, children younger than 12 are unable to get vaccinated. That could change. Trials are underway, including one Pfizer trial at Driscoll Children's Hospital in Corpus Christi. Dr. Jaime Fergie, the hospital's director of infectious disease, tells us trial participants are being pulled from all over South Texas, including the San Antonio and Austin areas, ranging in age from six months old to 11 years old. I am hopeful, and this is my personal opinion, I'm hopeful that by before the end of the year, we may have a vaccine um, that go down to six months of age. 
Dr. Fergie says children participating will either get the vaccine or a placebo, but those who get the placebo will be vaccinated by the end of the trial. And he adds the results may take a few months to come back. And if you're still on the fence about getting vaccinated or maybe you just have a few questions you want answered tomorrow, our KSAC community partners hosting a phone bank with Dr. Teresa Barton from University Health. It's from five to seven and we're going to provide the number to call on KSAC.com and in our early newscasts tomorrow. New York City taking a major step in trying to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Mayor Bill de Blasio announcing the city will soon require proof of vaccination for anyone who wants to dine indoors, attend a performance, or even go to the gym. If you're unvaccinated, unfortunately, you will not be able to participate in many things. That's the point we're trying to get across. It's time for people to see vaccination as literally necessary to living a good and full and healthy life. The change expected to take effect later this month in New York, not the only state trying to mitigate the spread. A school district in Phoenix, Arizona, choosing to mandate masks in school going against state law in Florida. Governor Ron DeSantis saying he will not impose mandates or shutdowns regardless of an increase in cases there. A commonality in all 50 states right now, an uptick in new vaccinations. According to ABC News, the national rate of Americans getting their first dose up more than 73%. Tonight at 6, our Garrett Berger takes us to Seguin, where he talks with vaccine providers about how many more people are now looking for shots in Guadalupe County. That story tonight on the News at 6. In other news, two people dead after a burst of violence outside of the Pentagon. It happened this afternoon at a transit station outside of the building. A Pentagon officer stabbed at the bus platform. The suspect shot and killed, meantime, by law enforcement. The Pentagon was locked down for more than an hour, and the motive is unclear. Today marks two years since a gunman killed 23 people at a Walmart in El Paso. Prosecutors say Patrick Cruzius traveled to the store with the intent of, as he put it, killing Mexicans. He is currently facing 90 federal charges, including capital murder and hate crime charges. A yeah, hearing is rescheduled on this trial. It was set to take place today, but it was postponed until November. Testimony continuing this afternoon in the punishment phase of the Otis McCain trial. He's the man convicted in the capital murder of SAPD detective Benjamin Marconi. And McCain's ex-girlfriend back on the stand for cross-examination. Erica Hernandez joins us live from outside the courtroom with the very latest. Erica, at times, it appeared this cross-examination got a little tense. Yeah, that's correct, Steve. It seems that the defense was implying that Sahara Hill was not allowing McCain to see his son. Now, defense attorney Joel Perez focused on a certain court order saying it ordered Hill to let McCain see their son on certain days. He also pointed out that another protective order that was issued didn't change that court order ruling. Both the state and the defense went back and forth on this issue with Hill. Do you see any word here that it says you no longer have to file follow the visitation order? It's not in here. Would you agree? I'll, I'll hand you the document if you want. And when you described to the jury yesterday when he punched you in your face and had bruises all over your chest, did you feel his love then? What I felt was pain, humiliation. I can be based on um, their charges and that institutional behavior. Okay. Now, also on the stand was a Bear County jail sergeant who spoke about heightened security around McCain after last week's incident when he hit a bailiff after his verdict was given. Now, it was a sh short day for the jury. We'll explain that coming up at 6. And we also will remind you that we are live streaming this case. You can find it at KSAT.com. Steve, Ursula. Thank you, Erica. We've learned the name of a man who died after being hit by two drivers yesterday. That's right, two drivers. He's been identified as 41-year-old Juan Gallardo Jr. San Antonio police say he was attempting to cross Castroville Road early yesterday morning. He wasn't using a crosswalk and was hit by one driver. He was then hit by a second driver while that first driver was calling for help. 
Community safety alerts now in the palm of your hand. The San Antonio Police Department has launched a new alert system to notify people of crime that's happening in your area. SAPD will be sending subscribers notifications of crime trends, updates on critical incidents and upcoming events in the city. They have partnered up with the West Care Foundation to pinpoint certain issues here in San Antonio. Crime doesn't happen all over San Antonio all at the same time. Crime happens in specific areas, and many of those become hot spots. And that's what we really want to be able to build the capacity of those areas to really kind of fight back and take back their neighborhoods and make them safe. It's pretty easy to sign up. All you have to do is text SAPD to the number 39987. For more personalized alerts, you can respond with your zip code. It is the end of an era for the San Antonio Spurs. Patty Mills headed to Brooklyn to play for the Nets. Not only is it a sad day for Spurs fans, but for the San Antonio community as well, with more on the loss of one of the most beloved players in Spurs history. Let's check in with Greg Simmons. Yeah, this Greg. is going to be a tough one to take, not just for the Spurs and their fans, but also, of course, for the community as well. And he's not the only Spur lost during free agency. DeMar DeRozan is also leaving. The Spurs star reserve was lured away. Two-year, $12 million contract. This is according to ESPN, which says the contract includes a player option for year two. Mills was the last member of the 2014 championship team that still wore the silver and black until now and also played in the 2013 team that went to the NBA Finals. He spent 10 seasons with the Spurs, proved to be a key reserve sometimes starter when injuries warranted is also a team and community leader. No one in San Antonio will forget what he did for this adopted city during the COVID-19 pandemic and what he was able to do for his own home country, raising awareness and funds to help with Australia's indigenous population. We will always be grateful for Patty and his wife, Alyssa, and wish them the best. Now, the Chicago Bulls are trying to finalize a sign and trade deal with the Spurs for shooting guard DeMar DeRozan. The Spurs will get Thad Young, Al Farouk Aminu, a first round pick and two second round picks. That's according to the athletic in exchange, DeMar would sign a three-year, $85 million deal, according to ESPN. DeRozan has played in the silver and black since the forced Kawhi Leonard trade to Toronto during the 2018 offseason. While the Spurs are letting Patty and now DeMar depart, they did sign two new free agents. Got them for you coming up in sports. All right, and looking at our weather right now. Who needs a jacket? <laughs> Who needs a jacket? Really? I'm gonna, can I come clean with everybody? This is why I was wearing my jacket. Oh, yeah. uh, well, you know. Busted. Time for a new shirt, Adam. I was distracted. When's your birthday? February. Okay. We'll start, <laughs> we'll start collecting now. <laughs> I got a few on the way. Okay, I want to go over our weather headlines. We have a few showers out there this evening and a few more showers possible in the days ahead. One day in particular stands out more than the others. And then as we get into the weekend, we're looking sunny, hazy, hot, and humid. Also, space station flyover. We're going to talk about that coming right up. Thank you very much. Adam, we had some emergency sign works out of downtown on 35 earlier this evening, but that is clear. But we do have a new situation here. This is 35 at Pine Hackberry to be exact. So now let's take a look at that here. You see emergency crews at I-37 southbound ramp there block because of this crash here. Just to show you that on the map here close to downtown. Also have a crash on the west side, Loop 410 southbound at Valley High causing some delays. We'll be here to watch it, guys. Thank you, Sam. The back to school sales tax holiday is this weekend, but besides shopping sales, there are other ways you could save a few bucks. We have some tips to share coming up next. Before the kids head back to class, parents head back to stores, stocking up on markers and folders and maybe a backpack or two. And this year, cha-ching, the retail industry projecting record spending. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore. It says you'll likely see higher prices this year, so it pays to do some homework. 
so long summer hello binders backpacks and all those glue sticks brian garcia strategy for back to school shopping just get it done honestly we just buy it all at once because there's no guarantee of a sale do the math this stuff adds up families with k through 12th grade kids will spend an average 849 dollars this year that's 59 dollars more than last year and a record for starters most everything is costing more there's the microchip shortage which is affecting tech products especially laptops and tablets there's also been some pandemic related inflation just on everything overall consumer reports deal hunter samantha gordon says there are some sales but discounts just aren't as big this year so it's time for a refresher course and penny pinching 101 first thing experts say make a list make a budget before you even head out, shop your house and use leftovers. Of course, look for sales, but ask about student discounts on tech, too. Spread it out. You won't need everything, like fall clothing, the first week. For supplies, try dollar stores and the big warehouse clubs. Maybe even team up with other families in the neighborhood and buy things in bulk and spread out the cost that way as well. And save the tax. This Friday through Sunday, Texans pay no sales tax on most shoes, clothing, and school supplies, including all those glue sticks. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Good advice. We're all been there. Sky 12 over Woodlawn Lake. And, you know, rainy July, rainy August. <laughs> Look at all that green grass. Green park. That's yeah. right. Looks good. It's been, uh, we've been very fortunate in the rain department. It's, it's been good for us. And we still have a few showers out there to talk about today. Not a whole lot of activity. And then we do see our rain chances change a little bit. For one day this week, we're going to spike them up a little bit. So spotty showers becoming a little more numerous in nature. By Thursday, sunny and seasonable weekend, we have that space station flyover. That is tonight. So set your alarm for this evening. Get the kids outside. We'll have some clouds in some locations, but generally speaking, some decent viewing. It's going to be a quick one. 942 PM is when it starts and it only lasts four minutes at 942. Look to the northwest and it's going to disappear to the east. So it's going to veer from the northwest over toward the east. That's your space station flyover. Take a look at the visible satellite imagery, and we definitely will have some areas of lingering clouds, especially south of San Antonio, but even locally, some passing clouds can't be ruled out. It's those thunderstorms down to the south and the leftover blow off clouds, the upper level clouds that could really inhibit and impede some of the uh, space station viewing for some folks later on this evening. Otherwise, you look around and just the scattered fair weather clouds for most of us north of Highway 90. And that cloud veil, of course, is the upper level clouds blowing off from the thunderstorms earlier today in LaSalle County. And that's where we saw a lot of activity earlier was farther south of San Antonio, closer to the frontal boundary, the stalled boundary. And now it's east of San Antonio, where we have some of those pop up showers and thunderstorms. Really not a lot of thunder with them, to be honest with you. These are brief splash and dash moving north to south, spotty in nature around Schulenburg, but not hitting Schulenburg, pushing southward across I-10. Very brief in nature, but quick, heavy rainfall and isolated, highly isolated rainfall associated with them. And here's a look at the radar of the past two hours just south of town. Not a lot of activity there. You go west and up into the hill country, just the fair weather, put puffy, patchy, cumulus clouds. Look at the past 12 hours, though. Last night, early this morning, we had some showers and thunderstorms, especially farther south of town, even a little bit along the coastal plain and the coastal bend here, southeast of San Antonio this, this morning. And that's right along the stalled frontal boundary. It's no coincidence. That's where the showers and thunderstorms have been firing. But despite that, we anticipate a shift in our upper level weather pattern. As we get into Thursday, we'll have a little disturbance come in from Mexico and another one drop in from the plains. In turn, we're going to boost our chances a little bit for Thursday. We'll get into the scattered category, so up to 40%. 30% tomorrow, 40% into Thursday, and then they fall off and are nothing as we get into the weekend. 75 this morning, 93 was our high temperature and the average is 97 for today. And that's actually the highest average temperature that we have or highest average high we have all year long. 91 right now, dew point is 70. We're feeling the mugginess, of course. Not bad for August. I mean, many locations in the 80s. Canyon Lake 88, 
Converse, Randolph, 91 along with Divine. You get to Del Rio, it's a little bit hotter as usual, 98, but Laredo actually, some showers down there in Webb County, keeping them down to 81. So right now we're at 70, or right now, tomorrow morning we'll be at 75 degrees. Mike Osterhage will be saying right now at 75. And then by the afternoon, we'll make it into the low 90s. There's that isolated shower chance tomorrow. Uh, low to mid 90s across most of South Texas tomorrow. Of course, a little bit warmer along the border, but we get into the weekend, sunny, dry, hot, humid, mid 90s, which is close to average. Thank you, Adam. All right, so has the new USA basketball team figured things out? Yeah, it, it really does appear so, and Kevin Durant is the guy that's leading the charge here. When we come back, we'll show you how Team USA was able to get into the semifinals of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, and Bios takes bronze in the final event. Coming up. Team USA men's basketball team has advanced to the Olympic semifinals after their come from behind victory over Spain in the quarterfinals today. They were fueled by the play of Kevin Durant, who brought Team USA back from a 10 point deficit after Ricky Rubio was able to hang 38 points on the Americans. The most points ever scored on an American team in Olympic history. It was Kevin Durant at the rescue as he scored 13 of his 29 points in the game changing third quarter. He has already passed Carmelo Anthony as the all time leading scorer in Olympic history and now is about to join him in the exclusive three gold medal club if he can lead Team USA to that ultimate goal. Durant was part of a 14 to 4 run to open the second half, led Team USA to the 95 81 victory, and now takes on Patty Mills in Australia in the semifinals on Thursday. KD was asked if it feels like they are really just two wins away from a gold medal. Uh, we're not even looking at it that way. We, uh, I mean, obviously, we know, the, we know the situation we're in, but we're trying to take it a day at a time and realize that uh, this is part of the process. Just get focused for the next day of practice and preparation for the next team that we play. Uh, but we're not trying to look too far down to the, to the end goal. We're just trying to focus on today. Congratulations to Simone Biles after bowing out of the team and most of the individual competition at the Olympics in Tokyo due to mental health reasons. She decided to compete in the last individual event, the balance mean, where she took the bronze medal. It was her seventh career Olympic medal, tying Shannon Miller for the most by an American gymnast. After the event, Simone was asked, after everything she's been through, does this medal mean more to her now? Yeah, well, to bring the topic of mental health, I think it should be talked about a lot more, especially with athletes, because I know some of us are going through the same things and we're always told to push through it. But we're all a little bit older now and we could kind of speak for ourselves. But at the end of the day, we're not just entertainment. We're humans and there are things going on behind the scenes that we're also trying to juggle with as well on top of sports. Um, so, yeah. As we told you earlier in the broadcast, Patty Mills is headed to Brooklyn for a two-year, $12 million deal. And so the last remaining Spurs that played on the 2014 championship team is gone. Now, while the Spurs did not re-sign the heart of the team, they have acquired two new free agents. The first, Doug McDermott, who agreed to a three-year, $42 million deal. The Ford is expected to help improve the Spurs' three-point game after the silver and black attempt at the fewest three-pointers in league history last season. McDermott spent the last three years with the Indiana Pacers to help build his career. Three-point shooting average to almost 41%. Spurs also signed Ford's center. Zach Collins to a two-year $22 million contract recovering from three surgeries on his ankle. And DeMar's gone, Patty's gone, so is Rudy Gay. We'll let you know where he's at it coming up at 6. You think the Spurs are done? No, I think they're just rebuilding. All right. Reloading. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> we'll be right back. Let's hope. A quiet evening. Don't forget that space station flyover, 9.42 p.m. Tomorrow will start the day in the 70s by the afternoon. Leon Springs up to 89. New Braunfels, 92. Elmendorf, Lavernia, Castroville, 91 for high temperatures. 30% tomorrow afternoon for showers. And then Thursday, we bump it up to 40%. A little more numerous in nature. Thank you, Adam. And thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News up next. See you back here at 6.